is about the barium assignment. And as much as possible, I want to just show you a few tricks and, and uh, things that you might help you when you're out in the field. One of the challenges that I particularly want to show you about is how the heck do you deal with uh, collecting material off the dominance? Uh, because if the dominance, if you're collecting in uh, a woodland or open forest, that means you're collecting off trees. So you have to uh, manage to pull material down. And there, there's a variety of ways and a few tricks uh, to deal with that. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing uh, um, is I'm happy to answer questions along the way. So uh, one, what are the things that you can gather together? Okay, if you look at the video, or set of videos, there's basically a checklist built into that of what to bring, what to take, um, how to prepare. Obviously, one thing you want to make sure is that you have basic first aid uh, kit with you. I like to supplement the, 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 any of the basic first aid kits, as far as I'm concerned, are missing two things. I'm not making any medical recommendations here for the sake of the video camera and liability, but the two things that are, I, I have found are invaluable to save my life are, uh, are no, more, no more stings or stingos or any of those anti-inflammatories that you rub onto a sting or a bite because I've managed probably to be stung by uh, Hymenoptera in more countries than, uh, than maybe some of you have visited. Uh, so it's not very pleasant, and if you're bitten, uh, as happened to me once, uh, from head to toe uh, by a whole bunch of wasps all at once, uh, by rubbing that onto the individual spots, and by having paracetamol or, or uh, something like that, that uh, will take away headaches. Uh, that can make the difference between um, a major and a minor event. Okay, the, all the other things I think uh, uh, might be common sense, but they're generally in, in a first aid kit or they're in the checklist that's on, uh, on the videos. I'll, I will uh, mention a couple of things. I talked uh, on the weekend, I showed the uh, on-campus students on, uh, at New England National Park, a, a day press. And a day press can be as simple as two bits of plywood where, where, you, uh, where you staple onto those plywood some bits of Velcro and some straps that give you a hands-free. Uh, I've got a student that has one uh, from that he built based on what they do. And this is based on what I learned from the Northern Territory Herbarium about 1986 when I did a field trip that went around uh, about 15,000 kilometers. Uh, but in Alice Springs, where they're not walking through forests, but generally in very open country, they, they have some where they have short handles. Doesn't matter, you can even adapt your Big press by simply taking out most of the cardboards or foams if you need to uh, while you're on the run. The advantage of this is it's light, it's portable, you can press immediately into this if you can't manage to carry your full press into the, the field and as soon as you're back you can reconstruct what is your main press that you've cut down to take into the field or you can transfer from a purpose-built day press to your, the press that you've uh, borrowed from us. Okay, uh, some other things that uh, I, 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 I've talked about GPSs, I don't need to talk about those. Oh, one thing I think is worth saying, these hand lenses that we've provided you are, are, are fantastic and they're fantastic value for the money, about $2. If you lose it, you can go online to eBay and buy your own. You can just buy one and replace it. But I'm going to tell you two tricks that will avoid you, uh, two, three things. One that you've already been told about is getting it onto a string and putting it in a pocket, if you can, when you're 
uh, tra traveling around. The reason I like to put it in a pocket is partly so it doesn't go bash, 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 but also if it falls apart, and there are two ways these can fall apart. One is the screws can come undone. So if this becomes very uh, slack or loose, I know that's a warning to get out a uh, small screwdriver and tighten it up. Um, a screwdriver on a, a pocket knife will work or a mini screwdrivers or anything else that you can use. Someone else's uh, sharp pointed knives, not your own because you wouldn't want to wreck them. So make sure that's tight. The other thing is, I noticed with the uh, hand lens I had on the field trip, which was a different one, it was a brand new one, and I, I moved it and I could hear a sound. If you, if you hear it rattling, that's almost certain that this ring that's holding the uh, glass, the lens, in place is coming loose. And at the very worst, if you don't bite your fingernails, you can use your fingernails to tighten it uh, and make sure. Otherwise, uh, you can uh, p play with uh, um, uh, any objects that you can put down, but you don't want to scrape the glass. Main thing is, you nip those things in the butt. Don't, don't let them get so far that the thing falls apart and you have to buy, buy a replacement. Okay, uh, and if you want to, like any lens, the best, the best thing is to make sure that uh, before you clean it, that you blow off any dust, which you can do with your bread. And if you use a clean cloth, it doesn't matter whether it's a hanky, um, the tissues, if they're, most tissues uh, you have to be careful of because uh, they, they will have a lot of lint. So you're better off with a, sort of a piece of uh, uh, cotton, even a clean cotton shirt that's gone through the, uh, that's been washed and dry before it gets your body oil on it, that, that will work well. Just huff on both sides and, and clean gently. Going back to the theme of tr collecting from trees or shrubs, uh, last week we were on a, a field trip where one of the uh, major targets were, were uh, eucalypts of, uh, of various <coughs> species. And a really good way to figure out, in some cases, to figure out what the species is, especially if you've got on, collecting on the northern tablelands or the north coast where there's a simple little handbook which you can use for identification, if you can actually see, for example, the stringy barks, uh, we could work out on the weekend, uh, uh, on Saturday, I could work out uh, with high confidence that the species of eucalypt, uh, the, the string bark at uh, Wollamombi uh, Falls at Edgar's Lookout was Eucalyptus caliginosa because they had small cup-shaped fruits. And there is only one, uh, and, and solitary and stalked and not, when I say solitary, uh, each fl uh, flower, uh, flower bud develops a fruit the umbalasters are stalked, they're not sessile, so you don't have crowding of uh, fruits altogether. That, that where you might contemplate things like um, uh, eucalyptus uh, ligastrina or uh, um, another, the diehard stringy bark. So, uh, and I knew it couldn't be eucalyptus neomanii or eucalyptus levopinea because the fruits were too small and the wrong shape. And I could do that without, uh, quite, quite quickly by looking up with a pair of binoculars. Now, um, you, you may or may not have a pair of binoculars. Uh, if you're in a situation where that's going to be useful, maybe you can speak around to someone else and see if you can borrow a, a pair. I, they're fantastic from that point of view. If you're collecting in closed forest, uh, uh, if you spray your back first with uh, insect repellent and even if you're doing this for eucalypts if you make sure you're not going to get stung or, or get scrub itch or ticks on you the best thing I find is to actually lie down on the ground and then you can your body is acting as part of a tripod your elbows are the other parts and you're holding up and you're steady uh, trying to do like this can work, but if it doesn't, 
you take a horizontal uh, position. So that's going to be really uh, handy. Now, of course, a um, pair of secateurs uh, or some other cutting device is better than just ripping off branches. Ripping off branches is not particularly good for the plant and uh, sometimes is more likely to allow uh, that to become uh, diseased and you don't want that. The other thing is it doesn't make for a very pretty specimen. So at the very worst, if you do break off a, a larger branch, uh, trim off your specimens uh, with secateurs to the size that you need. Sometimes a pair of um, uh, fairly solid uh, kitchen scissors will work. Obviously it'll work with anything that's herbaceous, but once it gets uh, to be more woody, it won't. So, um, what I want to do is, show, uh, I'll start off by showing you what um, some things that, uh, uh, I'll mention one thing that uh, is in the video, which is not realistic for you if you're collecting in New South Wales, and that is uh, using a slingshot. Slingshots are fabulous, but a few years ago they became prohibited weapons. So they're actually, it's actually, you'll get into more trouble having a slingshot as, a, uh, a, as an adult uh, than you will in New South Wales, uh, than you will uh, perhaps having a, a firearm. Uh, so it's, um, I'm not suggesting you use firearms. I, I got a permit to use a slingshot and it took me more than six months, uh, more than $170, and the rotten thing then has to be stored in a equivalent to a gun safe. Uh, so it's, it's really not uh, realistic. For any of the external students living in Queensland, go for it, because they're legal there, you don't need permits, and you can buy them either online in, you know, from Australian companies or go into shops and buy them. I, um, I'm certainly not encouraging you to uh, use them in New South Wales, okay? I'm saying the opposite, they're not appropriate. Uh, when I do use a slingshot, what I uh, use is a, uh, what I'm firing is a, um, sinkers usually with, in this case, with a very heavy duty uh, fishing line and that's being uh, fired up and over the branch and then uh, if I can manage to get the sinkers down uh, to within arm's reach, I'll then tie on a rope uh, and pull back the uh, fishing line and that gives me something that I can pull down on. Okay, so we can't use that. You could use uh, the fishing line as a, as a throw rope by itself without a uh, without a slingshot, and, and that's a realistic proposition for many of you. Uh, here, uh, that's just a bit underwhelming. I would go for a larger, heavier sinker, or just add another one of the same size. I'm going to uh, take outside and maybe we'll try. Um, there's a bit, little bit of Torrington um, on the end of a string. Um, this, this sort of cable uh, is will will also go up a reasonable distance, and I'll show you how to use that in a moment. But when you pull this down, because that's fairly thin, it uh, you can end up really getting serious uh, uh, hand burns. So it's a really good idea, even to have a cheap pair of gardening gloves or any sort of gloves. Uh, maybe not your Italian leather gloves. Um, but something that you can, you've got uh, around or can get hold of for, for minimal cost uh, that will protect your hands when you're pulling. Uh, I've, I've, I've borrowed this one from Rose Andrew who uh, um, is also working on eucalypts and um, what it shows you is a heavier rope uh, with um, an object. Um, I've, I've been out with uh, Ian Brooker he used a rope that was twice or three times as thick as this, and instead of this bit that would be on a boat, he used a large uh, hexagonal 
nut, something that would have come off a large, large sort of the sort of mining uh, mining truck size uh, nut. It was heavy and small and dense as a throw rope. So we'll try that as well. Okay. Um, and uh, of course we've got a very nice uh, pole pruner, but uh, it's not realistic for you to um, spend you know, $150 on this is the most beautiful uh, pole pruner. There are pole pruners that you can buy for uh, 30, 40, 50 dollars uh, from places like Bunnings. And they're not bad, but they don't go up nearly as high. This goes up to five meters. Uh, Ian uses another one. I'll be back in just a tick. In the tech lab, in that preference. Uh, one moment. <laughs> 